the last time we discussed about non-derogatory matrices and how one can determine um, commutativity of two matrices when they are uh, non-derogatory. So specifically, a uh, non-derogatory matrix is one for which the geometric multiplicity of every eigenvalue equals one. And we, we proved one theorem which said that if A is a non-derogatory matrix, then B commutes with A if and only if there exists a polynomial P of degree at most n minus one such that B equals P of A. <clears throat> also just made a small remark that the converse is also true. That is, A is non-derogatory if and only if every matrix that commutes with A is a polynomial in A. So one quick question for you. If I take the identity matrix, is it non-derogatory? No, sir. No, it's not non-derogatory. Obviously, because the identity matrix, uh, it commutes with every every other matrix, but it cannot be written, uh, any other matrix cannot be written as a polynomial of the identity matrix. Any polynomial of the identity matrix will end up being a scaled version of the identity matrix. So you cannot, in general, write some matrix that commutes with A as a polynomial of a, where A is the identity matrix. And so uh, the identity matrix is non-derogatory, is not non-derogatory. How about the all ones matrix? So today we'll discuss uh, a little bit about convergent matrices. Now recall that a matrix is convergent if all the elements of A power M go to zero as M goes to infinity. So we also know that a diagonal matrix is uh, convergent if the magnitude of all the diagonal uh, elements of that matrix are less than one and the diagonal entries are the eigenvalues of the matrix and so you can say more generally that if the magnitude of all the eigenvalues is less than one then the matrix is convergent. This result extends directly to diagonalizable matrices also and we've seen that before. Now um, using the Jordan canonical form we can extend this idea to non-diagonalizable matrices as well. So if uh, A equals um, S, J, S inverse, then A power M equals S, J power M, S inverse. So um, if uh, A power M goes to zero as uh, M goes to infinity, then uh, this is true if and only if um, J power M goes to zero as M goes to infinity. So the question is, when does J power M go to zero? So now J is a block diagonal matrix. So it suffices to consider the behavior of a single uh, Jordan block because each of the blocks get raised to the power M when you raise the uh, a block diagonal matrix to the power M. So if I consider a single Jordan block, say JK of lambda, which is basically a matrix with lambdas on the diagonal and ones on the first super diagonal and zeros everywhere else, and this can be written as lambda times the identity matrix plus this nilpotent matrix, which has zeros on the diagonal and zeros below here and ones in the first super diagonal, zeros everywhere else. And so we'll call this lambda i plus n k. This is the k cross k matrix, which when raised to the power k will give you the all zero matrix. So specifically n k, is equal to j k of zero. Now, um, uh, and uh, n k power m equals zero for every m greater than or equal to k. So that means that if I take j k of lambda power m, then this is equal to lambda i plus n k power m, which can be written as the summation i equal to 0 to m, m choose i, lambda power i times n k power m minus i. And using this property here, we can simplify this as summation i equal to m minus k plus 1 to m m choose i, lambda power i, n k power m minus i. Other terms will become equal to zero because n k to that power goes to zero. 
and uh, this is true for all m greater than or equal to k. Now, um, so the, the 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 diagonal elements, okay, which is the i equal to m term, are all lambda power m. lambda power m which means that um, uh, for j power m to go to zero as m goes to infinity it is necessary that uh, lambda power m should go to zero or mod lambda is less than one okay and uh, conversely if Uh, when lambda is less than one, uh, what we need to show is that this this quantity will go to zero. So that means that um, m choose I will write it as m choose m minus j lambda power m minus j. So I'm just replacing i with m minus. I'm m minus j uh, and uh, so this, this we want to show that this goes to zero as m goes to infinity and for j equal to one through k minus one zero one up to k minus one now this quantity here m choose m minus j lambda power m minus j is equal to the magnitude of so this this combination term is m into m minus 1 all the way up to m minus j plus 1 divided by j factorial times lambda power j then i have a lambda power m here and this can be upper bounded by magnitude of m power j. I'm replacing all these terms with m, lambda power m divided by j factorial uh, lambda power j. And uh, so basically then it suffices that uh, to show that m power j times lambda power m. So this is the only part that depends on the numerator is the only thing that depends on m. So it suffices to show that lambda power m, say magnitude, times m power j goes to zero as m goes to infinity. Now there are many ways to do it and uh, what you can show is that, see this is lambda power m and this is m power j. j is some fixed number here. It takes values 0, 1 up to k minus 1. So none of that is scaling with m. And so um, this is some polynomial term. This is an exponential term. And so eventually if mod lambda is less than 1, this will eventually overwhelm this term and you will get 0. So um, one way to do to see that is if you take logs, you have uh, j log m um, plus m log lambda which will uh, go to, so this is m times log lambda, whereas this is j times log m. And so this will go to minus infinity if uh, as m goes to infinity, uh, because log of mod lambda, if la mod lambda is less than one, mod la log lambda is less than zero. So basically what this shows is that, um, even for non-diagonalizable matrices, uh, the matrix is convergent if and only if all the eigenvalues of the matrix are less than one. So to show this result, note, note that we made essential use of the Jordan canonical form.